Hey everybody, in this little demo I'm going to show you how to hook up our terrain domain products uh, using UDIMS in uh, Maya and Redshift. Okay, so let's say you've downloaded our model and you've purchased our model or got a freebie and we bring it into our 3D app, which in this case we're using Maya. Just import the model. Okay, so now you see we have just a default, uh, there's no texture on here. So really quick, I'm just going to go ahead and make a Redshift texture or redshift material rather. Okay, and we'll just assign that to our object. Boom. Okay, so now we have our object and we have no material, no textures on it yet. So uh, our new products now have UDEMs. And essentially what that is, is before we had one texture map for this whole entire object. Well, now we can have multiple texture maps just giving us more resolution and that's more resolution in the color, the bump, the spec, and the displacement, right? So let's just, this product here uh, in particular happens to have four. So let's take a look at the maps. We have our color, our bump, our normals, and our spec, right, and our displacement. So let's just pop up in our four color maps. So you can see now that each one of these maps is, is all for the same object, but it's multiple textures, right, just giving us more and more resolution. And we provide you with an 8K and a 1K. And the reason we give you the two resolutions is because maybe you just wanted to test it out. The 1K is much faster to load, or you can even use your 1K and your pre-production setups and then use the 8K when you're for your final renders, right? Just to save a little render time. So anyway, you can see here's our four textures, right? So each one of these textures is applied in a different UV set on our model. So these are super easy to hook up. It's not like, oh no, I have to plug in all these textures. No, it's the exact same process. You just have one more checkbox. So it's super easy. <clears throat> so I'm gonna walk you through it now. So let's pop up in our Hypershade. We go to our Redshift material and we'll open up our attribute editor and I'm gonna go to my color tab over here and I'm gonna load in my textures and let's just go to the proper directory. Okay, and we're gonna go to our output and we're gonna load the 1K textures this time just so it's a little bit faster. Okay, so now I'm, I'm in my color directory. I click on the first one, 1001, right? And I click open. Now the only thing you gotta do is right here on your UV tiling mode, just make sure to set this to UDIM. And what that does, that auto loads all those maps for you and assigns them to the proper UV space. So you don't have to load each one of them. You just click on the first one, set your UV tiling mode to MARI or UDIM and it will automatically figure out what it is and how they're assigned to each UV space. And it's, so that's it, now it's super easy. So now we have our textures assigned. So now let's just take a look at our model and you can see, that's it, now we have our color map. So, you know, when I'm kind of new to UDIMs. When I first got in here, I'm like, oh no, this seems so complicated. Really, you saw how easy it was. It's just connecting, connecting your maps and then throwing in, uh, making sure your UV tally mode is set to UDIM or MARI. And that's it. So now all four of these maps got applied properly. And so now we have our color sorted. So now we're gonna do the exact same workflow, but we're gonna do it for our other maps, right? So we're gonna go to our reflection tab right here. We're gonna click on file and we're gonna load our spec maps. So we just go to our spec, click on the first one, click open, and then make sure to check UDIMs. Boom, so now they're loaded. Okay, so now we have our spec, we have our color. So let's get us a little bump map in here, right? And we give you two bump map options. So uh, for, uh, to get your, your Redshift bump map, just go to the Redshift tab over here, click on shader, and then click on Redshift bump map, and boom, it made a node. And then we will just drag this node into the bump channel, no problem. Okay, so now we're gonna click our input tab here, click on file, exact same song and dance we've done before. So now with our bump map, we have a couple of different options. You can load your normal map as bump or you can load the bump map we provide. They both have kind of different features and they both can be useful for different things. So it's totally up to you which one you pick, but for here, I'm just going to pick the bump map and the same thing, pick the first one in the sequence and change it to UDEM and that's it. Okay, so now we have one more little thing we gotta do and we need to connect our displacement map. Okay, so the way to connect displacement in Redshift is you just click on your material and you click on this far right node over here, right? And you have a couple places you can put in your displacement. You can put it in on your initial shading group attributes or you can put in the Redshift tab. They both work the same. So in this, I'm gonna click, uh, pick displacement shader under Redshift. Click this, pick on file and the exact same thing we did before except we're just loading displacement this time. Displacement and pick the first one and click open 
and just set your UV tiling mode to UDIM and that's it. So now we have everything hooked up, right? So let's, let's uh, there's one other thing you have to do when you're assigning a, a displacement map to a Redshift renderer. So the object, we need to enable Redshift uh, displacement. So super simple, just click on your object, go under your Redshift tab right here, and then you have to check two boxes, displacement and tessellation. So I check those, and what that does, that allows Redshift to say, oh, this, guess what? I have to render displacement for these objects. And I will toggle this on and off once we get our lighting set up, just so you can see the difference. Okay, so that's the first step of the process. You see it's super easy to plug in UDIMs. You don't need to connect each map. No fear of like, oh my god, I got 25 maps connect. Nope. All you do, load the first one, load your first map in the sequence, which is 1001, and then click on UDIM. And that's it. So now all of our maps are applied. The software does all the work for us, and uh, this is super easy to set up. Okay, so now we have our, uh, we have our, our material assigned. We have our textures assigned to our material in the proper channels. So now we're going to make a Redshift dome light, and I'm just going to pop a quick uh, HGRI map in here. And uh, yeah, let's, let's do a quick render and see how these look. And again, I am using the 1K textures uh, because they're so much easier to load and faster to load. Now we also provide the 8K, which look way better, seven times better, but it takes a little bit longer to load these maps into memory. So when you're doing your setups, you may just want to do you know the, the basic uh, a 1K map first, get your material set up, and then go in and tweak it once you kind of get everything ready to go. And uh, okay, so you saw how fast that rendered. It was super fast, but we got these funky looking result here. Like, oh my God, what's happening to my object? No big deal. All this is, this is the displacement value just needing to be tweaked and dialed in, right? So, uh, but at least it works, okay? So really quick, let me show you what uh, it looks like when you don't have these checkboxes for the object enabled, like I said earlier. So you can see now there's no displacement on this. It's just straight up model. Um, uh, it's just this low poly model, right? Okay, so we need to enable these again and you can see, boom, there's the difference. Now it will process these textures, although our value is a little funky right now. So no big deal, we'll fix that. Okay, so to fix that, super easy to do. We just bust up in our hyper shade, click on our displacement node and our scale right here, we need to just change the value of our scale. Let me pull this window open so we can see it. Okay, so our scale is set to one right now. Let's go to point one. And there you go. You can see we have a, a, a better result on this right now. Okay, and we see so here's where it was, point one. You can see how it freaks out. So if you ever see your object like going berserk, no worries, that usually happens. All you're gonna do is just go in here and tweak your values. So I'm gonna set this to 0.2, 0 0.1, whatever the case may be, whatever value you wanna have it at is what you kinda of need to set it to be, right? And then the same thing, let's just go in and edit our material really quick. So uh, we tweaked our displacement values. We're gonna tweak our specular values. I'm gonna kinda of put these, the weight and the roughness at 0.5 each, which is a kind of a neutral value, not a lot of specular highlights, but also it's not super matte as well. So it's just kind of a default setting there. And then now let's tweak our bump setting. So we just click on our bump node here and let's just jack our bump up really high to one so you can see what it does, right? So you can see now our bump maps a little too high, right at one, so no worries. We just keep tweaking the value, 0 0.5, 0 0.2, and I think 0.2 about does it. And that's a pretty good looking setup right there, right? Okay, so cool, this is, so this is kind of the process. So I'll just walk you through really quickly again what you gotta do. So the first thing you do, you assign a material to your object, then you assign the textures to that material, and the one trick you have to do is make sure when you're doing UDIMs, you set your UV tiling mode to UDIM or MARI, right? And this will auto hook these up for you, and you can see how fast this was, right? So now that I have this hooked up, you know, typically what I'll do is I'll save this model, as a Maya file or a Max file. So that way you already have the material set up and you have your values set up that work for your renderer, right? So now that you have it, you save it. And then anytime you need this model, you just open up the file and you don't have to reconnect the maps. So cool, that's it. So just walking you through how to set up our materials in Maya and Redshift and using UDIMs. And yeah, I can't wait to see what you all do with this. And I uh, hope this helps you out a lot.